Jim's community work embraced three worlds, First Nation, Métis, and non-Aboriginal, but it was not always easy. Part of the challenge came from governmental laws that divided the Aboriginal community by giving some family members treaty status and others Métis status, and treating the two groups very differently. Like myself, I'll explain it this way. My mom was a treaty married to my dad, and she, she lost her treaty rights for a long time until my, my, my uh, dad died. A few years after, she got it back. She got back her treaty rights. That's how I got my treaty rights, all of the family. Eh? So it's Jim Satie. In this world of shifting labels, Jim experienced prejudice from both the white and First Nation communities. Although he never spoke of it, friends could see that he made a conscious choice to walk the road of love and respect, even in very trying circumstances. He made it a point, I think, not to affect him. When I think back at what he, what he was about, you know, and, and that he said, who are we to reject anybody, I think was probably a quote that I can share with you with him. You know, who are we to reject anybody? I think he could feel some people that were so hostile that he couldn't, you know, probably, I think Jim could feel it. He never said so, but I knew him pretty good. Knowing Jim, he would have sort of forgiven them, you know. He would, he would chalk it down to, he wouldn't say it, but he would chalk it down to a little bit of ignorance on their part. That's how I would think Jim would look at it. He certainly wouldn't insult them or anything like that. He never did around me anyway. He never said anything to anybody here. He was a gentleman, Jim. Yeah, he was a... Uh, I missed him when he was gone, Jim, you know? My grandpa was very patient and kind to everybody. It didn't matter who you were or what your skin color was. Or if you were female or male, he treated everybody the same. <laughs> 